1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. -na 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 -na. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Hey there. Hey, man. <laughs> Let's make believe we've been in the studio the whole time. For hours. Look, I'm still getting all my <laughs> stuff together here. We just had a, like a, uh, a, a, a meeting. Yeah. We have our Radio guys aren't supposed to have meetings, are they? No, this is all fun. Yeah, I mean, to the listener, it's just a bunch of guys that come in and play some tunes, and that's it. No, we, we had meetings and all sorts of stuff going on. we got to hash things over with the, the uh, boss. I walked in the studio. There was 30 seconds left on the Pink Floyd song. I didn't even have my headphones uh, plugged in or anything. I was in the bathroom. <laughs> I noticed. Taking a uh, <laughs> leaky. All right, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> we better just take a break, I think. Yeah, let's uh we've worked too much already. We better <laughs> Oh yeah. We better take a break. <laughs> Regroup. What are we even doing today? Oh my god. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> what a mess is right. Okay. I don't even know what we're doing yet. Usually we we're we're in our little office and we sit there and we discuss the show and we write down things we want to talk about and then we come in here mm -hmm. and we get our coffee set and we get comfortable. Anthony plugs in his computer. Yeah. We check out a few tunes with you guys and then we get on the air and we're ready to go. Well focused and and knowing uh, the path we're gonna take. <laughs> yeah. Well, today uh, we're off the road. <laughs> so. That's okay. We we'll we'll get right back on. Yeah, we'll regroup here. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the fax line two one two nine five seven W N E W. Request line two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. What I can tell you, we will be replaying the Pork Man today. Ooh. Who sung his lovely Christmas carol yesterday? Uh, brand new call from the Furby Police. That was very good. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do. Um, people enjoyed the I stole stuff from the hotel prank call. I like that. Yes. Okay. And the Santa thing is not gonna happen today, Anthony. No, we just can't do that. You'll 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 wreck me as a human being. <sighs> you will wreck me as a human being. Well, it's known that Opie is the crueler. Of the two of us, well, um, the uh, more insensitive. I think he goes off half cock sometimes. But who's actually crueler when you're, you know, replaying all these bits that that I'm just trying people to... just did not enjoy in the past. Why would we replay them now? He's trying to show people the type of person you are. But you're crueler you for replaying them. There's a tape <laughs> of Opie. Um, Telling uh, a small child that there is uh, no um, S A N T A. <laughs> you know what I mean? It happened a long time ago. The poor kid. Now that guy is uh, a president of a company. Oh, He's grown up yeah. and he has kids of his own now. <laughs> oh, yeah. All in a year and a half. Huh? Oh, shut up, man. Or two years, maybe. You will wreck me as a human being if, you, if you're allowed to play that. Tonight. Well, I have it. Maybe we'll do that. Can you? Can you? You're repeating yourself, dear. Echoes from the canyon. Anthony, cigars around the world, huh? My goodness, look at this. It just brought us in a little package. I I'm looking at a, a nice bag of uh, cigars and a cigar cutter. I'm pretty psyched. Uh, Is this what you get when you call uh, Cigars Around the World? You get uh, the cigars and the cigar cutter and the boy. newsletter? Yeah. Anthony, wow, smell that cigar. Nice. Smell it. Whoa, you know what this is? Huh? A Maker's Mark cigar. Bourbon seasoned cigar. You know who drinks Maker's Mark? No. Lemmy from Motorhead. <laughs> Swear to God. Did a show with Lemmy once in the city. Yeah. And he was drinking Maker's Mark. And my guitarist, Rex, thought he could go shot for shot with him. Lemmy did the show. Our guitarist did not. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I didn't know Maker's Mark made a cigar. This is the kind of stuff you get. With cigars around the world. Yes, for only twenty four ninety five per month plus shipping, cigars around the world sends five fresh hand rolled cigars, a smoking newsletter, free cigar cutter, a gift card, and more. And what's cool, they got two to twelve month memberships. They're available by just calling one eight hundred fresh sixty six. How's this cigar cutter work? You put this. Ow! 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 <laughs> Just kidding, of course. <laughs> uh, give him a call. Cigars around the world. 1-800-FRESH-66. 
66, okay? 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, with the police. Live Pearl Jam before that daughter. It's Opie and Anthony. Hope you're enjoying your afternoon. A lot of people faxing and emailing about our our, our uh, Feels for Meals program, Anthony. Oh, yes. Very, uh, very important thing around the holiday season. Feeding people that are going hungry. Yes. A lot of people don't, they don't get the turkey and ham and everything and have a nice Christmas dinner. So we're, we're doing something a uh, little out of character for us. <laughs> I think a lot of people... Um, oh, I see. Okay, sorry. I, I, I mean, as far as being charitable, yes. Opie, not a lot of people know about our charitable uh, exploits. Well, we're, we're quite the philanthropists, me and Opie. Well, yeah, we, we've raised a lot of money uh, for charities. Actually. Yes, yes. Our, and um, our Demand World CD raised a ton of money for the homeless veterans. Homeless veterans, yes. They, and, they got more money than we did for our CD. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I think everybody did. So when we like push our CD on the air, Opie and Anthony's Demand World, it's not because we're going to make a buck off this thing. We're yeah. just proud of the CD and want you to possess it. Manuel, who put the plastic wrap on it at the factory, made more yeah. per CD than we did. <laughs> Swear to God. So, yes, we're very charitable, of course. So, uh, we, we, we saw some people, uh, heard about them hungry. We felt we, we should do something for the holiday season. So, uh, we came up with... Feels for Meals. Feels for Meals. A very simple concept. Uh, Rick, how many girls do we have interested? Did you call him back today? Yes. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. Uh-oh. He's shaking his head. We might need to recruit more women. It's a very simple concept. We're going to get a few refrigerator boxes, I guess, right? Yeah. We're going to put a, a topless girl in the box. Uh-huh. We're going to cut out some holes. All right? And then the guys and the girls line up with their dollars. They hand a dollar to Anthony and I. And then they step forward. And they reach into the box. And... No, oh, oh, that's two bucks. That's two bucks. Okay. One feel per buck. There you go. And then the person moves on. Right. And all money raised, we will feed the, the hungry this holiday season. It's feels for meals. Feels for meals. You get a feel and we, we uh, you know, get food to the, the needy. Everyone wins. Yeah. Everyone wins with something like this. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, it is tax deductible. You can write off your dollars. I got a message on my voicemail from a stockbroker. He says he made an S load this year, and he needs yeah. a write off. So he wants to come down with about a thousand dollars. A thousand feels. Yeah. <laughs> we could raise so much money. Oh yeah. I think a few of the ladies have backed out. So if you're a fine uh, young woman or an older woman, I don't care what type of woman you are. Want to help out? Yes, you want to help out our show and help out the needy, give us a call. Rick will screen the calls and see if you're worthy. Donate your boobs for charity. Sure, 212-757-1027, okay? Mm -hmm. We got uh, legal counsel Paul on the phone here. What does he have? He's our unofficial lawyer, I think, for our show. Yeah. Hey, Paul. Paulie. Hey. What do you got, man? How are you guys doing? Good. You know, I have to tell you, a little thing happened to me yesterday. All right. I'm on a plane coming back from Washington after days in business, and I overhear this conversation. People are talking about how great Howard Stern is. So yeah. now my interest is peaked. And they go on to say that uh, Stern got somebody to carry a phone into a bisectomy. Not only did they listen in on the bisectomy, but he carried out a piece of scrotum. <laughs> and then Stern supposedly... Had someone eat the scrotum on the air for tickets. Oh, come on. I'm serious. They honestly thought it was Howard they Stern that did that? They thought it was Howard Stern. Oh. So I'm, I'm looking at him. So I woke up and said, excuse me, I couldn't, I couldn't understand what you were talking about. But we talk about the same thing. We go through the whole story again. And I have to advise them that it was not Howard Stern. It was Opie and Anthony. Oh, this is what we're up against. <laughs> they said, no, no. St only Stern does stuff like that. <laughs> no wonder he's got nine shares. <laughs> yeah. And we uh, got a point two. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, people, um, I don't think Howard needs any help at this point. <laughs> yeah. They didn't know. They said Opie and who? Uh, uh, if it is one of our bits and you're going to tell someone else about it, please get our names right. Oh, what man. station you heard it on. <laughs> Trust me, we need the help at this point. Well, I told them, you got to give these guys a listen. If you think Stern is on it, 
listening to these guys. Uh, and Anthony writes one of the uh, best goof songs of all time, the Hey Masturbator song that's on our Demented World CD. Uh -huh. And uh, there's emails going all over the country saying that Adam Sandler wrote it. <laughs> we can't. We can't, can't catch a break anywhere. Wow, we're uh, helping out other people with their careers. <laughs> right. From Maybe our deep hole. <laughs> huh? Is there a lawsuit in the making? Oh, you lawyers, oh, no. God. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, what do you think of your friend uh, Eric Nyberg? Oh, I don't want to go into it. It's Come on. Disgrace. Amy Fisher's lawyer. You know that guy? It's a disgrace. <laughs> it is a disgrace, right? Uh, you, th uh, you think he copped the feel off of her? Oh, come on. He didn't want to know. That's <laughs> obvious, huh? <laughs> he didn't want to know. It is so obvious to everyone. Remember in court when, when they'd be standing there and she'd have her head tucked in like, his <laughs> shoulder and he'd be stroking her hair? Yes, it's okay, baby. You, you meet me back in my office, you dirty girl. <laughs> You're a dirty girl, aren't you? <laughs> You know, there's, there's gazes that are exchanged between clients and lawyers all the time. But mm, yeah. I have to admit, every time I ever saw this guy looking at that particular client, he was looking down her shirt. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just a bad, bad Well, thing. she was one of the more hotter felons we've had in <laughs> uh, New York. Not anymore. Now oh, she's got that cold-ass stare. Yeah, she's a mess. She kind of looked cute, though, in the little hot pants, as I remember her being arrested yeah. with the hot pants and yeah. the uh, handcuffs. Now she's just hardened. You think yeah. she should be out of uh, prison at this point? Uh... Uh, let her sit. Why? Let her sit. She's yeah, probably getting a lot so more either. action in prison. Yeah, but she's done six years. There are people that murder uh, people that are, are out of prison. All right, so we're going to let her out. Right she either. has nice legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. If, if it was a guy, oh, <laughs> would you want to let him out? I'm, I'm just saying at this point, fair is fair. Is you're, if you're allowing uh, murderers out uh, after you know less than six years, then why is she still in prison? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Well, oh. you know, it's, it's the penal code that's all screwed up here. You know, it's it's... It's not that. I don't uh, agree going with going along uh, towards the, the legs thing. How do I get on the seals for meals? Well, you got to you got to figure out if it's legal first of all, Paul. <laughs> I, hey, flesh is flesh, my friend. <laughs> okay, all right, because we're gonna go forward with this feels for meals thing. I'm liking the concept. Uh, I, I like the concept. But I think you should invite the mayor to be the first one. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, that'll help us. Don't <laughs> bring his son. <laughs> <laughs> his little, his big little son. His his Chris Farley son. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, uh, we don't have a good track record with Mayer, so we'll be avoiding him at all costs. No. I'd like to kick off 1998's Fields for Meals. <laughs> yeah, I can't see that happening. Say, oh, the mayor caught, caught the field. Oh, he dropped dead. Yeah, he, all he right. kicked off of this station. All right, Paul, we got to fly. Bye-bye, you too, bye. Thanks a lot, man, for that. Bye. Opie letting out uh, Amy Fisher. I think guys that are in there for, for selling weed ought to be let out first. Well, sure. Guys that are doing, like, life for selling pot. Well, obviously, the whole system is screwed up. Yeah, but you're ready to let Amy out. What if she was some guy? What if, instead of Amy, wait, 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 wait. What if it's the same crime, but it's like Tyrone Williams? You're going to say, let him out, Opie? Let him out at this point. Because I don't think Amy no, Fisher is hot so. anymore. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Well, because that's the, you know, that's what you were going with. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm going with. Yeah, but she's not hot anymore. I just think that if you're going to let murderers out... Uh, that don't even serve, you know, six years, then, then mm. why is she in there? That's all. Uh -huh. I think the whole system should be looked at if you really want to get into a discussion. I, I think it's ridiculous. I but. think she's best kept behind bars, to tell you the truth. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people walking the street that should be behind bars, yeah. but, but they let out. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, we're going to be talking to someone that is just absolutely sick. Ugh. Sick, sick, sick. She might have the sickest job in the entire country ever. If that if that's not a good radio tease, I don't know what else to say, but stick around. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Creed. What's this life for from my own prison? If you're looking for uh, something different and you haven't checked out the whole Creed CD yet, we're playing, uh, I think, three tracks here at NEW. It's a really, really good CD. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. All right. Well, Opie, we are soliciting uh, girls to help us out with our charity, Feels for Meals. Uh, we're offering uh, a girl. In a box, nude, um, for a dollar, you get to reach in and uh, feel. Right. One one little <laughs> for a right. dollar. Yeah. And all the money we raise will go to feed the hungry around the holidays. Yes. So I think it's a good cause, and it's a good charity, and it's a good way to raise money because everybody leaves happy. Well, the guys are completely into it, and there's a bunch of girls that have been calling and saying they would line up for charity and, and reach into the box as well. Right. And we got a girl standing by that wants to be the girl in the box. All right. 
Hi, Stephanie. I hear you'll get in the box. Yes, I will. Uh, what kind of body do you have? Um, my measurements are 38, mm. to about a 30, about a 38, 40 weight hip. After the 38, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> what kind of cup size? Um, I'm on the verge of a D, but I'm still a C. That could be good. Uh -huh. right, and nice. you wouldn't mind hanging out in a box and letting guys, you know, fill you up? I strip part-time, so. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And all this money raised will go to a great cause. Fine with me. Feeding the, the needy this holiday season. That's great. And it's just one squeeze per dollar. Yeah. Okay. You think your uh, breast could hold up? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> there could be upwards of 10,000 squeezes. That's fine with me. Yeah? Uh-huh. All right. Man, you're rock. Maybe we could have her come down here and we'll have a couple of guys go through a test run. Yeah, where are you? We'll right now I'm system. at work. I work at uh, a hospital. In the daytime. Are you uh, close to 57th and 7th? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Hell no. I'm in Queens now. Uh, we got to get you down here and maybe have Earl and a bunch of the guys, you know, give a test feel to make sure you're worthy. Okay. I'm serious. When would this have to be? Uh, hold on the line, all right? Uh-huh. She looks totally into it. You can just tell. She would definitely do it. 40 hips, dude. That's why the box. Baby got back. That's why the box. Shut up. You're going to piss her off. She's on hold listening to us. We'll, we'll take any girl right now. It's a hefty dumper. They're, they're not coming out. They're not coming out of the woodwork here, Anthony. <laughs> All right, we got to take what we can take. Get. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a crack whore at this point. We need to raise the money for charity. It's a refrigerator box. <laughs> Shut up. Right. <laughs> We need a washer dryer. All right, all right. Side by side. Uh, you know, you blew it. Now we, no, we lost no, our Come girl. on. No, no, I didn't. I'm sure. You blew it. Still, she strips part-time. I'm sure it'll be fine. That's why the box, that's why the holes, you reach in, you, you take your squeeze for a buck. <laughs> you're, you're wrecking the whole concept, Anthony. No, I'm not. I just want to give quality goods to our faithful fans. There's people that line up at soup kitchens every week. And here we are trying to make them a little happier this uh, holiday season, and now you 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 scared the chick off. No, I'm uh, okay. I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm sure. Take she's it back. Beautiful. I I completely take it back. You sure? I'm positive. All right. All right. Man. <sighs> well. All right. She hung up though. Oh no. So now we got to tell her to call back. <laughs> oh well. Thanks, Anthony. Well, we, we we need more girls anyway. Yes, we do. We've got a good fax here. If you want to send a fax in, 212-957-WNEW. Uh, Opie and Anthony, I would like to share with you how I became a member of your great Tuesday Night Hummer Club. Me and my girlfriend came into the city on Tuesday to see the Christmas show. And, uh, and while sitting in traffic around uh, Radio City, we were listening to your show. When she says to me, are they talking about what I think they're talking about? So I proceeded to tell her about your lovely little club. I knew this worked on her mind, though. Uh, I, God, look at this writing. It's so hard to read. Wow. And it's such a great story, too. I knew this worked on her mind throughout the night because she kept on mentioning it. Well, after the show and dinner and a couple of bottles of wine, we went back to my van to go home. As soon as we left the parking lot, she proceeded to make me a member. Now, I don't know. I don't. Now, I don't know if you realize how hard it is to have this being done to you while you're driving in New York City traffic. You just can't concentrate. Well, we finally get to the tunnel where traffic is moving and I can relax a little bit. I am going through the tunnel and buses are beeping at me because I'm all over the road. <laughs> finally, as we reached the end of the tunnel, the job was completed. Oh, that's so timing. He, be he became a member in the tunnel. Came shooting out of the tunnel. <laughs> that's best. <laughs> Who's on line two? Oh, congratulations. Oh, Stephanie's back. Oh, Anthony, apologize to her. Stephanie. Stephanie. Yes. Hi. 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 Did you hear Anthony abusing you? Yes, I oh, did. Wow. Yeah. Now, now, okay, let, let's clear something up. Okay. Um, I, I'm very grateful that you want to help out uh -huh. for this worthy charity, right. Feels for Meals. Um, it was just the 40 hips that got me a little bit. It's just my rear end is very, very nicely shaped and it's very, very 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 pretty uh, what's your uh, ethnic heritage man i'm dominican and white oh really mm -hmm. do you have like a oh. jennifer lopez but Ex everybody tells me that that oh. i even look like her you do uh -huh. Ooh. yeah mm -hmm. okay that's okay yep. 
You don't look like the retarded version of Jennifer Lopez, do you? No, <laughs> Like the one chromosome off version? Yeah. Like, you ever see Patrick Swayze's brother? <laughs> yeah. Like, there's Patrick Swayze, who the chicks really like, and then there's Patrick Swayze's brother, who looks like Patrick Swayze with, like, a chromosome yeah. off. If Patrick Swayze was retarded. Oh, yeah. I'm absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and there's Tom Hanks. And Tom Hanks' brother. And Tom Hanks' brother, who looks like the retarded version of Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. They do that to you on the talk shows all the time. Yeah. It's like, hey, <laughs> Let's bring out Barbara Streisand's sister. It's like, oh my God, is she oh, in a home? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So you look like a retarded version of Jennifer Lopez. I am absolutely gorgeous. All right. All right. Okay. So you won't need a side by side washer dryer no, box. I won't. Okay. I'm just making sure. All right. All right. We haven't turned you off yet. Okay. We haven't turned you off yet. No. Okay. Good. We'll try harder. No. Where do, where do, <laughs> you, you say you dance part time? Yes, I do. What What did you do since Giuliani cracked down, though? Uh, I still do. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me. He's not oh. paying my rent. Ooh, oh, I like that. <laughs> Man ain't paying my rent. Not at all. So you're in one of the clubs that hasn't been uh, shut down yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. We'll have to go there. Is it one of those cheap strip clubs? Uh, one what? one was, but not anymore. I, can't, I don't want to say the name. Yeah, I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> Half the girls come out and they have cesarean scars and <laughs> C-section scars. No. And they're like six months pregnant and they're crack whores. It's like, oh, great. This is fun. I mean, shouldn't a C-section end your career as a, a dancer? I mean, it's like, it's like if you're a star basketball player or football player and you get this radical knee injury. Right. It's tragic and all, but but you, you can't play the game anymore. You gotta face it and move on and leave it to the people who are able. So when that girl comes out and starts taking it off, maybe you saw her at the bar and you're like, ooh, I can't. I'm gonna stick around and milk this beer until she hits the stage. Yeah. And then she comes on, takes her little getup off, and you're like, ah! <laughs> wow, uh, wow. Well, no, Stephanie, no. Frank and crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, I asked that just because uh, the first time I went to a strip club, that's what happened to me. I'm and I've been so horrified sorry. ever since. Yeah. And I remember the song because of that. What? There is a house in New Orleans. They call the rise. That was your first song, yeah. Yeah, and then the girl, like, had the big, huge sea scar. Oh, no, I'm nowhere near that. I had a great experience. My first booby dancer, uh... Mm -hmm. She did a rug act. That was the first thing I ever saw. She, she brought the quilt from her, uh, you know, ninth, when she was in the ninth grade. That her grandmother probably, like, yeah, quilted knitted. for her. Right. And she opens it up on the stage, and I didn't know anything, because it's the first time I'm in there. I'm like, what? what is she doing? <laughs> I she a mat. Oh, she lays down, and then the music starts. We got tonight. <laughs> Who needs tomorrow? Let's make it last. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, she's, she's looking at me. I think she likes me. <laughs> she doesn't like all the rest of these guys. You're special. And then, <laughs> I'm special. And then she pulls out the hand lotion, and all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> I love that maneuver. What's that yeah. about, man? Vaseline intensive care. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can do something special with a match. Oh, you're, you're the match girl. Oh, yeah. there's a couple. Boobies flambe. Yeah, there's a couple of clubs in Long Island that does that. Hey, man, you, yeah. you want to pay for a match? What do you mean pay for a match? <laughs> can you pick up the uh, beer bottle? No. Uh, no? Uh -uh. I used to be at a place in Ronkonkoma, Bird's Place. I went there. This girl could pick up a beer bottle. Really? Just leave it at that. Oh. Use your imagination. But then, like, after a while, mm -hmm. I just wanted to drink my beer. So she's walking along the bar, and when she'd come over, I'd, I'd like, cover the top of my beer. Like, no thanks. No thank you. All right. Okay. <laughs> Great. Well, we're looking forward to meeting you. Right. Yeah, Stephanie, you're going to hopefully be our girl in the, the box for hopefully our Feels for I Meals will. program, okay? All right. Hold on the line, because now Rick's got to talk to you a little more. All right. All right, cool. All right, she's not pissed at us. Sounds like a party girl. I like her. Yeah, bro. Sounds fun. All right, on the way, we got Ted Nugent. Damn it. Nobody does. You bastard, that's my <laughs> bit. You stole it. Come on. If other radio stations stealing our bits, and now you're stealing my bit. It's a, this is a community property in this room. I don't have many bits, and you stole one of mine, you okay. bastard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, 
Uh, Opie was the one that came up with the <laughs> Patrick Swayze's brother looks like the retarded version of Patrick Swayze. <laughs> I remembered him saying it. I brought it up thinking everything's community property. Oh. But for some uh, reason, Opie needs credit. Well, I can't sit here and he do like... He needs to be coddled and cuddled. But I can't sit here and do a dice to make up for it and steal one of your bits. I can't do voices. I'm talking about a bit. I, That's a dice oh, that yeah. comes in here. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Anthony. <laughs> what about the pork guy? Yeah. I can't just sit here and steal your pork guy. Okay. I can't do it. Well, I, I, I only hope... have two bits. You stole one of my bits. <laughs> I hope that cleared everything up. <laughs> oh. Opie, Patrick Swayze, retarded brother, bit. All I was trying to say is when you see the talk shows and they bring out the brothers and stuff, they right. look like the, the, the actor if he was retarded. Hey, it's Helen Hunt's sister. Let's bring her out. Whoa! <laughs> She's got twice the forehead. <laughs> All right. Uh, we need to talk about Mindspring, Anthony, really fast here. Uh -huh. We like Mindspring. We like them a lot. You need uh, Internet service. You need Mindspring. You want to get online fast and stay connected at a good speed, 56K, you know what happens a lot of times? I used to try to sign on, and it's like 26-4. I'm trying to play these high-tech games online that I've been talking about. I get shot before my guy moves. <laughs> it's like, what? You get I got... shot before the screen comes in. <laughs> you get this tricked-out computer, all the features, yeah. and the final link in the chain is your Internet provider. And if you have crap... Your computer isn't worth crap. I think it's obvious to everyone that we need the 56K connections these days. Yeah, it's got to stay connected. And you need free customer support 24 hours a day, seven days a week, toll free. If you're having a problem, you want to think that you could call someone and they're going to be on the phone right away. Mm -hmm. You don't want to sit there and wait uh, 30, 40, 50 minutes for someone to, you know, to get to you as you're oh. on hold. Pain in the ass. Call Mindspring toll-free at 1-888-MSPRING and tell them Opie and Anthony sent you, and Mindspring will waive the $25 startup fee and give you the first 30 days of service free from the day you sign up. Sign up today and receive a $10 gift certificate good towards any purchase at musicboulevard.com. Also, Mindspring makes a great Christmas gift. Oh, you know what? A lot of people get in computers this year for Christmas, and then what happens? You don't get them an Internet provider, and they sit there going, What do I do with this, man? <laughs> right. I got the computer, but now I can't even get online. Yeah, so now they get the computer, you give them uh, the MindSpring hookup, and they're they're ready to go. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York. It's Opie and Anthony. Yeah. Um, you got to stick around. On the way, we're going to be talking to Kathy Joe. Now, uh, you got, uh, you, I got a, uh, 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 I don't even know where to begin, because <laughs> I'm going to be grossed out. Well, Re remember when we had Mark Golan in from yes. Maxim Magazine about uh, three weeks ago? He's our pal. He's our pal. Um, we were talking about one of his issues. Is it the December issue that did all the strange jobs? Yes. It is, right? Yeah. In the latest issue of Maxim Magazine with, uh, what's her name on the cover? Who's on the cover? I'm so unprepared here. Yasmin Yeah, Yasmin Bleeth. Yasmin. Okay, inside... He does a whole article on people that have very strange jobs mm -hmm. in America, okay? Yes. And there's a guy that, like, takes gophers out of holes in the Midwest <laughs> and cute little jobs. And there was one that in interested us, a lady, Kathy Joe, that has a company called Crime Scene Steam and Clean. We leave the scene clean and pristine. What this lady does for her job, she goes to, uh, you know, crime scenes yes. where people kill themselves or murder someone else or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, the coroner, they usually just take the body away, and yeah. maybe some of the big pieces, and, and they leave you your house in a, a, a complete mess. Mess. With blood and guts and, and uh, skull fragments, whatever. Now, who's going to clean that up? I never thought about who goes in and cleans it up. Remember Pulp Fiction? Oh. <laughs> you know how much blood is in a person? Yeah. And if they bleed out yeah. all over your rug? Yeah. Who are you going to call? I always thought maybe the coroner cleaned it up. No, they just take the body away and they move on. This lady, Kathy Joe, has this company, Crime Scene Steam and Clean, and she goes in after the coroner takes the body out, and she cleans up the scene. Let's look at some of this. Decomp cleaning only without fogging or dump. Three hours, two people cleaning, 800 bucks. <laughs> and then they have four to five hours, two people cleaning, 800. That's with dumping. Mm-hmm. Decomp. I, I That's when a body's been just laying around for. Ah, uh, I like the price differential between shotgun and small gun. What's that? It's like twice the price for a shotgun to clean up a shotgun murder or or suicide. Yeah. 
Oh, oh we got to talk to this girl. I am getting so skeeved out. But <laughs> we're going to talk to Kathy Joe in just a bit here and see what she's all about, how she got into it, and if she enjoys her job. Oh, my, yeah. I, I'm I'm going to lose it. So the heebie-jeebies. So there you go. You, you have that to look forward to on the ride home. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we're getting a ton of requests for the Special Olympics song, so we might as well do it here. We had our, our new pal Stephen Lynch in last Friday. He was a huge, huge hit. Everyone's emailing him at pushead at AOL.com, P-U-S head at AOL.com. And uh, this was a song that he told us about off mic, and we said, you just got to do it for our show. And he goes, dude, I don't know, man. This is way out there. And we basically forced him to do a Special Olympics song on our show last Friday. All right, Anthony, Kathy, Joe is on hold and standing by. All right. We'll talk to the lady that owns the company Crime Scene Steam and Clean. You're not going to believe this one. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. It's Opie and Anthony. Don't forget, later on tonight, right here on NEW at 10 o'clock, we got the Lenny Kravitz exclusive concert from uh, the time he was uh, touring in October. It's going to be very, very cool. That's brought to you by your local Nissan dealer. Opie, on our phone, we have Kathy Joe, out on the uh, West Coast. She is the owner of Crime Scene Steam and Clean. We leave the scene clean and pristine. Yes, yeah, so we found out from uh, about this lady through the latest issue of Maxim Magazine. Yeah, they had an issue, uh, December's issue, the latest issue, right? With uh, Yasmin Bleeth. Yeah. And uh, they have unusual jobs that some people have, and Kathy Joe cleans crime scenes. Because in essence, uh, the the cops and everybody just take out the bulk of it, the body, and leave the blood all over the place in pieces. And uh, you need somebody to go in there and clean up. Yeah, I never thought about that. You're not going to want to go in there and clean up somebody you know, so you, you hire people. I'm 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 getting grossed out already, and I, I, we haven't even talked to her yet. <laughs> all right, let's talk to Kathy Joe. Her company is called Crime Scene Steam and Clean. Kathy Joe. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. I cannot believe uh, what you do for a living. Yeah, it's pretty gruesome sometimes. Uh, sometimes? I, I would I say guess. all the time. Nah. Now, how did you get into this? Um, a friend of mine in Chicago had a friend who uh, uh, killed himself with a shotgun, which is very, very messy. And they took the body away, and she stood there saying, what do you mean? You don't clean it up. And um, she, my friend called me, and um, I went back to help out. And then I started looking around and found out that at the time, which was about four years ago, nobody was doing this kind of thing. Yeah, it's not the kind of job you would just want to jump into. No. So this is your own business. Yeah. And uh, I guess you're making money at this. Yeah, we we do pretty good. How, how much like you're clearing a year? Does. Well, we can you know we can talk between you know uh, say forty and sixty. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Wow. Now, how many jobs do you get a year? Uh, this year we're doing really good. In fact, I just did uh, one this morning, and that was number like eighty for the year. Uh, and what was it? What was? Yeah. It was a shotgun suicide. And all right, so you you show up at the house, and what do you what do you find? Oh, um, lots of bits and pieces. They take all the big things, and they just sort of leave all the little stuff for us. Ooh, oh my lord! So where yeah. do you start? <laughs> that's always the question. You, that's exactly the question. You look at it and go, oh, Lord, now where do I start? Um, usually we start in the far corner and work our way out. <laughs> oh, my God. Especially in a, in a shotgun. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I see your, on your price list uh -huh. that the shotgun rate is uh, double the small gun rate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, shotgun usually takes, uh, well, today we had three people, but usually it's two people and so anywhere between uh, six to eight hours usually. It's every bit as big a job as a decomp. And a decomp? Yeah, what do you do with a decomp? <laughs> well, we have excellent masks that we wear. It uh, smells that bad, huh? Oh, yes, it's really it's really bad. And, in fact, they, usually the only way they can get rid of the smell is to call me. I've had people almost literally tear down their homes trying to get rid of it. Oh, man. And how do you get rid of it? Oh, that's a trade secret. Oh, 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 oh. Ixnay on secret the... Uh, <laughs> you betcha. Is it true that when some of these people kill themselves, you find pieces of them in three or four different rooms? Oh, yeah. Oh, in a shotgun case. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's just, it really is amazing. Oh, my God. Now, this is the busiest uh, time of the year for this? Yeah, yeah, really, uh, from usually from Thanksgiving until after tax time. <laughs> it's, uh, I know, but it's true. Do you go to work just hoping the phone's going to ring with the job? You never know when the, when the, when you're going to get the call. In fact, after we did the shotgun this morning, I got another call for a job, a, a decomp, in fact, over the weekend. But So we could get a couple in a row, and we might go for a week without getting any. Oh. 
You never I mean, you just never know. What is the sickest scene you uh you cleaned up? There was one job that really stands out because if the incident happened, it was a natural death, but it was a decomp. The body had been there for a while. And it happened a year ago, August, and they called me uh, uh, more than a year later to clean it up. Whoa. They had locked it down for over a year uh, before they so the end, and that was on a third floor apartment building of a very nice swanky place down in uh, like Santa Monica. Um, and we took out over over two tons of, of crap out of that place. Ah, uh, didn't the whole apartment complex smell? Wouldn't you think? I mean, I, I would have thought it would it it would have, and I can't imagine how the other tenants put up with it, but apparently nobody cared. Wow. So now where do you take this? junk after you're done ripping it out well in california uh, we have a law here that companies like myself help to pass that makes uh, the biohazardous material that we take out of there anything that's covered with blood and, and body fluid is considered medical waste and it has to go to a burn site it's actually considered a biohazard well, which is really so. the reason one of the reasons they hire companies like mine not just to make the mess go away because it truly is a, a serious health hazard. Hey, is it true you come to some of these locations and, and it's dark and, and you're like, oh, man, i got to, you know, open up the window or, or put up the blinds, and then you realize there's just millions of flies on the window? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, I've actually, one of, <laughs> especially in a decomp situation, you know, where the body's been there for a while, that's part of the natural process. And uh, I vacuumed like eight bags of flies out of a window. Oh, <laughs> it, was, it was really bad. Oh, my Lord. And you don't have to chase them around like you do in the house, you know, when you've got one and you're after it with the fly swatter. Yeah. You just sit there, you know. Now, you're located in L.A. I'm assuming that you did some high-profile cases. Yeah, we've done a few. Any that you can hint toward? <laughs> no. No, sorry. Really? We, we do try to be discreet. I mean, we've had, we've had jobs where... You know, the reporters were hiding in the bushes with telephoto lenses and there's helicopters overhead and that kind of stuff. And we try to keep a low co profile. I mean, our clients are usually, you know, obviously pretty upset and they're under uh, a lot Phil of Hartman. strain. Uh, Phil Hartman. They don't, you know, they don't need that kind of stuff. Phil Hartman. So we try not to. We don't, we don't talk about it. Phil Hartman? Uh, I can't say. Oh, that means yes. I can't say. Oh, that means yes. How messy was it? Can't say. Can't oh. say. Not, not, not commenting. No comment. Oh, she cleaned up Phil Hartman. Oh, oh my God, Kathy. Quiet. You know, we don't get a lot of repeat business, but we do try to honor the, you know, the, the memory. <laughs> so what you do. Tell your friends. It, yeah. Did you ever get so sick on a job that you just couldn't do it? or? Well, you know, when I started this business, there was the idea that there, there was no job we wouldn't do. It was just a question of how much it would cost. Right. Mm -hmm. But there have been some jobs where we have sort of a rule that if you toss it, you have to clean it yourself. Our clients aren't paying us to clean up our own mess. And there have been a couple where I almost lost oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really, really bad. God. Yeah, do you have nightmares or anything? Oh, actually, there have been a couple that I, well, and I'm not making this up now. I used to feed my cats raw liver. <laughs> Chicken liver. Right. I don't do that anymore. I can imagine. And there were a couple of jobs that I, uh, ugh. The real messy things. There have been a few that I, I laid awake at night going, Ugh. Oh, my God. I'm getting, like, skeeved out. <laughs> I well, swear to God. I can't continue this. Uh, are you married? No. No. Uh, oh. you, when, when you date somebody, do you tell them what you do? <laughs> well, I, I try not to bring it up first thing. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> That's a good good rule of thumb there. And, and actually, you know, I need a lot of cops in corners. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so they don't care. Yeah. You They're know. kind of used to it. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, that's some job you got. What's your next job? Do you know yet? Or? Uh, well, we'll probably have that decomp over the weekend. Oh, you can't wait, huh? Well, yeah. Go. I'm excited. <laughs> Put in a little OT <laughs> on the weekend. Yeah, well, you get, you get paid a little extra for the weekend. You ever do cars, like trunks or anything? Yeah, I have done cars. Oh, Actually, not a trunk, geez. but I've done cars, yeah. I don't like to do them. I try to encourage people to just trash it, but sometimes they want to, they want to try and save it. What is it, like the scene out of Pulp Fiction? You ever see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very much like that. <laughs> Where they got to clean the guy's face off the back window and yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's very much like that. Oh, oh my man. Lord. Pretty I bad. swear to God, I, I don't know what to say. I'm like, I'm so grossed out. <laughs> Well, you can just imagine having to try to clean up Uncle George yourself. <laughs> God. Yeah, do you ever think about these people as humans or anything? Whether you're picking up parts of their skull? Or... Oh, yeah, absolutely. But you know what it is when, we go, when you do these jobs, you go through, you have to go through all the personal property. And you see things in there that they wouldn't want their mother to know about. You know? Oh, imagine. really? Yeah, you really get to know these people on a very intimate level. What was the wildest thing you saw? In that oh, regard. Stacks and, and, and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of, of porno uh, films and magazines. 
Okay. Well, I don't know. There was the guy that we did that was in drag when we cleaned him up. That was kind of weird, too. Was in drag? Yeah. <laughs> and what that, did he... was, that was a little strange. He blew his head off? Can I say that? It was one of those autoerotic things. Yeah. Oh, he strangled himself? And he slipped, yeah. <laughs> and you had to clean up one of those? Well, he was there for a couple days before anybody oh, found him. Oh, my God. <laughs> So that was kind of that was kind of strange. How embarrassing! Not only going like that, but you're in a dress. You're... Well, exactly. I mean, that was you know exactly. I felt really bad for. I mean, his grandmother was our client. I felt really bad for her. We cleaned up all of that stuff so she didn't have to deal with that before. You know, I mean, that was that was terrible for her. <laughs> well, you're talking about this like you know you're discussing a soap opera. It's like no big deal to you. Well, it is a big deal. I mean, each case is different, and everybody is a human being. I mean, you do you do you do understand that. Yeah. And uh, empathizing with our clients is a, is a big part of the business. I mean, we we hear a lot of stuff, and they always want to vent. They always want to tell you about whoever you're cleaning up, and you know. <laughs> whoever you're cleaning up. <laughs> He was a good guy. Could you get that spot? <laughs> yeah. Or they say, God, you know, I'm, that guy was such a rotten person. I'm really glad he's not around anymore. I mean, people tell you all kinds of stuff. When yeah. you leave in the uh, the job site, do you look at each other over and go, hey, you got a little bob on your cheek <laughs> or something, you know? God, no. I hope not. Yeah. We're pretty careful about that kind of thing. All right, Kathy Joe, We'll let you go. Okay. Now, this has been... Uh, quite an experience. Well, thanks for calling. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. All right, bye. Oh, going to have nightmares. Opie and Anthony. Let's get back into the tunes here. I think it's safer that way. <laughs> 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Aerosmith coming to town December 27th. Can't wait. And supposedly, uh, Steven Tyler's stopping by the studio for a little visit. He promised us when we talked to him on the phone, and hopefully he's a man of his word. Kick his skinny ass he don't come in here. You think we'll even be on the radio, though? I'm trying to think. When is the concert? Thursday? It was like two weeks from Sunday? December 27th? Do the math? Yeah, I think so. So I guess we won't be talking to him. No? Well, I hope uh, he comes here anyway. He better come here anyway. We love Aerosmith, right? Yeah. Okay. Everyone is freaking out about the uh, the crime scene lady. Yeah. That was just... I think I finally found my line. Why? Because I was really grossed out. It takes a lot to gross me out and skeeve me out. I thought it was pretty interesting. It was interesting, but then I just started getting this feeling inside that I just needed to, to, to barf. Yeah. I'm serious. I started, like, dry heaving inside. Really? Yeah, just thinking about it right now, I'm 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 not happy. You're a little much. Seriously? Yeah, you're a little like a little puss. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, I've proven that I'm a puss on this radio show. Yeah, look at you. I, I could take a lot, but all skeeved out. I'm totally skeeved out. And she goes in where people commit suicide and cleans up the houses. That doesn't skeeve you out. I'm not doing it. And I wouldn't if I walked into the place I would, but I could listen to people talk about it. And she's talking about it like she's having tea with the neighbors, like it's no big deal. <laughs> you know? Thank God there are people like that that could do that. I was surprised when she told us how much she made. She yeah. said between forty and sixty thousand a year. I thought it would be more. Oh, I, I I was expecting hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Who wants to do that? I guess the people don't have a lot of money, you know. <laughs> oh, see, I'm getting freaked again. All right, yeah, you got like uh, some issues. Hi, N W. All right, forget all this morbid crime scene crap. What's the deal with Fields for Meals? <laughs> it's progressing uh, quite nicely. Fields for Meals. Come on, my hands are throbbing. I want to grab some boobies. Come we, on. We have up. a girl coming in tomorrow to audition. We're going to uh -huh. have a couple of guys come up and give test squeezings. Excellent. And see if this is the type of uh, charitable boobs. We and here's the question. For you guys. I got a question for you, though. Yeah. See, I'm not one of those privileged guys that have sampled the, uh, the how do you say, the silicone, the unnatural breasts. I've, I've had plenty of natural breasts. I'm curious on the silicone oh. factor. Will you have, like, a sample silicone woman there? Yeah, I think we should. I think we should no. have all different uh, shapes and sizes. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a variety here. You know, you get to pick your own box, you know, a whole selection there. No, that's a good idea. It all depends on how many girls we can get. Looks like Stephanie's into it, but we got to make sure she's worthy. We'll give some test squeezes make sure her breasts will hold up, because we know we'll get thousands of uh, guys and girls willing to squeeze them. 
Oh, forget it. I got my pockets full of money for it already. You know the deal. The girl's going to be in the box. She's going to be uh, topless. You've got some uh, holes in the box, and you, you pay us a dollar, then you reach in, and you get a nice quick squeeze for the dollar. And all the money raised goes to feed the hungry during the holiday season. Yeah, I don't care where the money goes. Just give me some boobies. Well, the only reason we're doing this is because we want to, you know, feed some hungry people this holiday season. Hey, if you're looking for something different this Christmas, give a gift of value this season and adopt a Take Paws pet for those special persons on your list. What are you going to do? Go to the mall? You want you want to deal with those parking lots? No, I don't want to deal with uh, Christmas shopping at all. What are you going to do? I I don't feel like starting. No. I, I, I'm starting to uh, shop online. I think it's a lot easier. It is. And these Take Paws pets, they're cool jungle animals. And their eyes are, are wicked because you swear they're looking right at you. Yeah, it's not like uh, the, the, these cheapo uh, stuffed animals that have, like, button eyes. These things are, they look like real eyes. They follow you. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. And uh, we've been saying this all along, but you brought one home to Jennifer, your mm -hmm. wife, and she loves it, right? She loves it. It's, it's like a, a pet to her now. What? Does she feed it? Well, no, but <laughs> she, she, you know, scratches it under the chin. And, oh, my God. Hi, kitty. You know. What the hell's going on at your house? That's how people react to these things. All right. And these are these first Take Paws pets are limited, numbered, and not available in stores. And just like Beanie Babies and Hummels and other collectibles, the first generation is usually the most valuable. If you're interested in uh, checking them out for yourself and you're online right now, you can go to their website. It's uh, www.takepaws, with a Z at the end there. Dot com. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York, Guns N' Roses, a little patience. Joe Walsh before that. It's Sophie and Anthony, and our Feels for Meals program is uh, developing quite nicely here, Anthony. I'm, yes. I'm pretty proud of our faithful listeners out there. They're, they're into our cause. Coming to the table. Yes. You know, we're getting calls from girls who uh, want to be in the box. Actually, we got a girl on, on a hold here that uh, is thinking about going in the box. Donating her boobs for charity. Yes, feels for meals. The guys pay the buck. They get to you know squeeze a breast, and uh, we feed the homeless this holiday season. All the money goes to uh, charity. Let's talk to this lady here. Hi, Terry. What's up? Uh, I'm just curious how you get in the box. Well, first of all, we got to make sure you're worthy. Right. What kind of uh, body do you have? We have. Um, I have 36C. Okay. All right. Are they natural or fake? Uh, no, they're natural. Natural. Do they hang nice? They hang fine. They you, serve me well. You can think I they ask... can take a beating? <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. Can I ask how old you are? Um, 37. That's not okay. bad. That's in range. Right. <laughs> it's acceptable. Well, we're trying to look for a girl that has um, some sturdy boobs. There's going to be a lot of squeezing going on. Sure. Uh, basically, the girl gets in the box. She's topless. Right. Uh, is she sight unseen? Not if you don't want to show face. Okay. You know? Go ahead. And then the guys and the girls line up, and Anthony and I, we're like the, the pitch men. We sit there with a hat. You, you give us a dollar, and then the guy or the girl, you know, steps up to the box. There'll be a couple holes in the box. They reach in, right. and they, they reach around for your breast, and they get one quick squeeze. <laughs> okay. And if they squeeze more than that, then we beat the hell out of them. We'll have a couple <laughs> bounces on hand. <laughs> Okay. And that's it. And then it's the next person. But this could go on for hours. Right. And, and when are you doing this? Um, hopefully in, within the next week. We got to raise money for the the homeless this holiday season. Right. That's Good. why that's why it's called Feels for Meals. We're gonna feed oh. a lot of homeless people this holiday season. It's a very good cause. Okay. Now, how tall are you? Um, five foot three. Five three. Uh, wait. Do I have to disclose this about well, one thirty. Well, yeah. We got to know what kind of box okay. to get. Yeah. We okay. want to make sure you could fit in the box. Right. About one thirty. One thirty-five-three. I wouldn't say slim. Okay, we might need like a, uh, a washer and dryer type box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, side by side. Can we stick your head out out, out the top of the box? <laughs> if necessary. All right. So your head will be popped out of the top of the box. There'll be some holes right around where your breasts are. <laughs> any uh, any children? Yes, two. Uh oh. Uh, what? Well, that sort of sometimes makes. Uh, oh. Baloney. Makes us have to cut no. the holes a little lower in the box, no. if you know what I mean. No, the, lows, the, yeah, we the don't holes want, are in the right place. Yeah, we don't want to cut the holes for the box, <laughs> you know, six inches off the ground. No, okay. not at all. Put it this way, between the breast is not my navel. We don't want uh, guys to have to start getting on their knees to reach into the box <laughs> to squeeze boob. No, they're not down there. All right, just making sure. <laughs> what are you, holding some type of inspection first? We're going to need you to come down here and uh, so we can get some test squeezes in. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Hi. 
fully understand. <laughs> you know, we're going to squeeze, make sure, you, you know, you, you're going to hold up. That is. Because you're going to get a workout. Has some real squeezability, huh? Yeah, we're going to have some guys come up, and uh, we're going to run through the whole procedure right. with the box. <laughs> and, uh... See, see uh, if your boobs can hold up right. under the strain of it could be ten thousand squeezes. <laughs> you gotta realize, it's not a big deal. Okay. Okay. Hold on the line for Rick. Okay. She's yeah. into it without a doubt. We got a lady on the line here, Anthony. Yes. Um, she has a problem with feels for meals. Oh, damn. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's going on? Uh, who am I speaking to, please? Uh, Opie and Anthony. Hi. Both of you? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I want to know one question. Okay. I listen to your show. Mm-hmm. All you have are women on the show. Women on the show. What do you mean? Squeeze the breast. Yeah. What's wrong with that? What about bringing a man in? All right. We've 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 discussed this yesterday. Um, we, we have to try it out with the Feels for Meals first. And then... We're going to have wax for snacks uh, for you ladies if it, if it really takes off. Yeah. Well, we'll, you know, get some slob and put them in a box and... Uh... You know, it's only the women. Huh? Well, the women want to... Uh... Well, the women want to do it, you know. And... Hey, maybe some men want to do it, too. Well, all right. We'll, we'll look into that. We'll explore that option. But, uh, you know... Our whole goal is to uh, raise some money for the needy this holiday season. And we think there'll be more guys. Well, yeah, exactly. Than girls. Exactly. More guys. Actually, well, there, but there's girls out there that may want to. There's a lot of girls that. A little bit. Well, there's a lot of girls that have been calling saying they, they're into squeezing as well. Oh, Whatever it takes to raise money, they're into it. Exactly. So, all right. We got to go. So we may hear this. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Uh, Bye. Okay. That's great radio. Cool. Okay. So uh, it's uh, progressing quite nicely, Anthony. Yeah. Anthony, Cigars Around the World, the original Cigar of the Month Club. Great idea for Christmas. Yes, if you got that smoker in your life and uh, they like to smoke up a stogie, uh, I think this is for you. For only twenty four ninety five per month, plus shipping, Cigars Around the World sends five fresh hand-rolled cigars, a smoking newsletter, a free cigar cutter, gift card, and more, and they got some uh, different memberships. Two to twelve month memberships are all, are available. Just call them at one eight hundred fresh sixty six. That's one eight hundred fresh sixty six. What is this Lorena Bobbitt looking thing? Opie, that is a uh, cigar cutter. Oh, I thought it was for cutting something else. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yeah, they sent us a little package, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I want to try one of these Maker's Mark cigars. It's it's bourbon seasoned cigar. And uh, I've never seen anything like this. But this is the kind of things you, you'll get with cigars from around the world. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's something different. Yeah, it's, that cigar's in an airtight uh, case as well. Look at that. It's all sealed at the top. This must be a very expensive cigar, Anthony. I want to smoke it. Well, then open it up and smoke it. What are you waiting for? We can't smoke in here. No? It's finally starting to clean out, clear out since uh, Scotso hasn't been uh, in here. Smoking the cigs? Smoking, yeah. All right. It's Cigars Around the World, the original Cigar of the Month Club. they got a website, cigarsaroundtheworld.com, or you can give them a call at 1-800-FRESH-66. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Cheap Trick, and the latest from Lenny Kravitz. Before that, don't forget, tonight at 10, right here on NEW, we got that exclusive Lenny Kravitz concert for you, brought to you by your local Nissan dealer. That's going to be very, very cool. Uh -huh. It's Hope, it's it, hey. and uh, we're pretty much out of here. Wow, look at the time. Had one of those wild shows today all over the ball field. Oh, yeah. But the Feels for Meals thing is coming together. Yes. Uh, I believe we got a couple ladies coming down to the show tomorrow to try out their boobs to make sure they're worthy enough for our mm -hmm. cause. To, yes. To raise all this money for the for the needy uh, folks this holiday season. Yeah. So uh, make sure you listen to that. I think also maybe tomorrow people could start thinking of uh, ideas. Um we got to do that thing where we we tell people what their problem is, and tell not people what their problem. Well, is. you know, let's. I'll put it in in terms you can understand. Okay. You're at work. There's a guy every day with horrendous breath. Okay. Comes over to your cubicle, maybe talks to you. Breath is is horrid. Give us a call. Give us his number. Anonymously, we will call him. And tell them about it. Ah, oh, we'll break the news. Or a guy 
with the worst toupee ever. Yes, and you've wanted to tell him for, for years, maybe he's your boss or something, you're scared to. Everybody talks behind this guy's back. Look at the dead rat on that guy's head. Yes. We, anonymously, will call him mm -hmm. and tell him in plain English, you know, hey, what the it problem looks is. bad. Yes. Guy wearing clothes from the 70s. Yes. Guy with dandruff, maybe. Yes. Whatever. Whatever it might be. What about um, calling a wife to tell her that her husband's having an affair? Would we go that far with this little concept of yours, Anthony? I don't care what it is. Right. We, we will break any news to anybody. So come up with uh, whatever you want. Somebody B.O. Somebody out there with B.O.? He's always coming over to you, leaning over your desk. Hey, how about how about those jets, huh? <laughs> and all you could think is, oh, this guy smells like chicken soup. <laughs> Give us a call. We'll call him yes. and say, hey, you smell like chicken soup. Yes. Well, if you want us to break some news for you tomorrow, it is FU Friday, so it's a perfect day for that. Mm -hmm. It's a way to um, um, uh, ex extend that concept a bit. Yeah, it's, it might cure a couple of FUs instead of, hey, I want FU to the guy who stinks at where I work. Yes. We'll try to clean it up a little bit. Maybe you've wanted to tell someone something for years. Yeah. And it's just been inside you and you just don't know how to tell them. We'll do it for you. We're here. We're here for you. Here to help. Yes. Now, we're, go we're going off the air now, so if you want to get this info together for tomorrow's show... Uh, the best bet would probably be to email us at this point. Uh huh. What is our official email address? Opac at uh, wnaw dot com. Yes, that's it, right, Rick? Yeah. O, o p a c k at wnaw dot com, or go to the wnaw website, click mm -hmm. on our pictures, and there'll be an email section there. All right. And we'll do this tomorrow. So just explain what you need us to say, to who, the phone number, and, and we'll take care of everything for you tomorrow. Anonymously. Uh, anonymously. Yes. Or you can fax us, too. Uh, uh, hopefully the, the other jocks around here will say the faxes. It ought to be fun and brutal at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and we love that. All right. Uh, or this. Or this. Just before 3 o'clock tomorrow, start faxing us. Yeah. And we'll get your faxes right away, and we can still do it for you. The fax line for tomorrow, 212-957-WNEW. Two two or once again, the email, opac, O-P-A-C-K, at WNEW.com.